Hi, everybody. Okay, we're at the last month of the year of 2023, the year of creative expansion. So there's some things coming through that I wanted to share with you today regarding the end of the year, a little bit around creative expansion, uh, potentially what's coming up, although they haven't really done much of that with me like they did last year. Um, I don't know why. I am getting a lot of personal information for you. First and foremost, what we're looking at for December is really, they really want us to go inward, but to recollect, they just said, our own energy. And whoa, I just got dizzy. That was interesting. Um, recollect our own energy and really make decisions about what we're going to do and not going to do in this next month. It's, they keep talking about recollecting our own energy. Okay, so here's what they're showing me. I have so many chills on this. This is because so many in the collective, remember, as light workers, we're holding light for others, but so many in the collective now are fractured energy with what's all going on in the world, right? Forget our own individual lives, but the, we're talking collectively, right? How we affect each other. And, um, okay, they just said we need light workers to recollect their own energy. Bring your light back in. Decide. So this, this also has to do with what do we do as indiv individuals each day? Are we giving ourselves away in the sense of overdoing, um, overworking? In the holiday season, for many of us, right, we can overdo. That doesn't serve anybody. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve the collective, particularly as light workers. And I know that's hard as a human, but we have to draw the line. Okay, they just said your work is very important to the collective. But it comes from what you contain within. The light you share and you carry helps heal those in the collective who are suffering this day. Now, we could get into all of that, right? Like, how could that be? I just sit here and do my thing. And if you're familiar, you know, and not and not take action, not whatever it is, right? It's not saying we don't do things in our human journey, but our light, the energy we carry, is more important than anything. And because that's, that's the truth of who we are, right? The invisible vibration that we carry affects others so it doesn't serve us to fracture ourselves okay and in this case sometimes it just happens naturally that we are fractured because we're going through things right but i'm talking about when we have the opportunity to be able to pull that light back in and i think we know what that means that's literal energy that we're giving to either others or expectations or things that don't serve us, we have to decide what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And that in and of itself allows us to hold light, contain, they just said, contain light in a way that, oh, I just got a buzzing in my ear. <laughs> I've got a really interesting tone. In a way that binds the collective. You can't bind when you're fractured is what I'm getting. There's nothing to bind to, okay? When we're talking individual light, individual. Oh my gosh, I have so many chills. I don't know if I'm explaining this right. I hope you're understanding it and be, being able to put it together for yourself. But when we have fractured light, there's nothing to bind to, to connect to. When we're strong in ourselves, and that that is from making the right choices for ourselves, not giving ourselves away, not being a doormat anymore, not over-scheduling. This is a really big deal. Deciding what, what, how much energy we're going to expend on certain things, people, events, all of that. It's really important as we're moving through this this last month. We need to be stability is what I'm getting. We need to be stability. We need to be the rock. They just said we need to have that light. Oh, they just said the stanchion. Okay, so there's something really important about us right now, light workers, that, um, that they just said are aware. Because when we're aware and we're awake, we're able to shift and change and make new decisions based on knowing what we know as our role as a light worker in the collective. Okay, so again, 
This is about the individual journey, but what the individual journey then shares that, our individual journey share is shared with the collective, okay? So, and you probably noticed this too, as you've gone through your spiritual journey and you've made shifts and changes, your impact on others is becoming more evident and more obvious. The veil is also thinning, so our light is actually, oh, they just said more expansive. Oh, it's actually able to reach others. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. In a, in a more um, efficient way, they just said, because of, because of the shift that we're making. Now, remember what we're seeing out in the total of the collective is the splitting off. Remember this. Okay. There's, there's, there's purpose in, in the splitting of old earth, new earth energies. And what we've talked about for a very, very long time is the struggle that we see. And I kept, I've said for a long time, it's just going to keep getting, I'll just say worse or more tenuous. It's going to, the bridge is getting thinner. Okay. But what we're doing is we're actually, we're acting as stanchions of that light. And if we aren't there, okay, taking care of our, well, taking care of ourselves, which we'll talk about that here in a minute, um, we can't exude that light and be that stanchion in the ground. Now, we all have our human stuff we're dealing with, right? But in general, around all of that, how do we deal with the things that come our way, all right? Do we offer fractured light? Do we not know when to stop having a conversation? Do we not, um, do we not have our self-care practices in place? You know, all those things as a human that we need, because we have a material body that gets really affected, really affected by a lot of this. We have a mind, we have a heart, we have all of this, right? But within that, how do we contain ourselves? How, we, how do we keep that light growing? That little flame, that little pilot light, right, that we all have, how do we keep making that a flame? Well, we do that by all the things we've been talking about over time, right? But what they're really showing me is that we are the light. We have to really focus on that in December for moving into the new year. This is a really interesting visual. It's a different visual than I've ever had before. They're showing us as a collective of awakened people, okay, which I guess what I would say is, as a, well, let me just tell you what I'm showing and what I'm showing. A collective of, of awakened people, aware people, they, they're really making a point of this when we're aware. Because lots of times if we're not aware, you know, other people may be, in the, you know, they're on their, everybody's on their spiritual journey, but they don't know they're, awakening. Well, the awareness, when you get cracked wide open, the awareness that you're on the journey is everything. That's the mind coming in to um, alignment with what the soul already knows and the body is going through, right? Because the body's going through this too. So when the mind, the human mind comes in and goes, yo, I'm awakening, right? Because many of us have had that overnight sensation of I'm awake, world, the world's different, right? So when we have that in our understanding, and we know that, that's when things really start to, we were able to start making new decisions in a way that, that we understand um, and how, how it actually affects us in the collective. Whereas otherwise, sometimes we're not gonna, if, when we're not awake awake, uh, we, we won't always necessarily know the trajectory we're taking <clears throat> is, the, is the, I'll just say is the, the higher vibration one, if that makes sense. Anyway, my point in this is, we as consciously aware, awakened, Light workers in December are holding ground. I keep getting holding ground, holding ground. I keep seeing like, like just rooted, like, but they, they're giving me the metaphor of trees. <clears throat> this doesn't mean rooted in place. This means rooted in your light, in yourself, in your soul self, in the divine I'm getting, in the divine. And what they're showing is these lights all over, but they're big, they're big lights and they're, they're not flickering, they're just strong. But we're having to, within our own journey, get that stability right, okay? Now, it's still always a work in progress. It doesn't mean like tomorrow you gotta have everything stable and you're like, because that's just not the human life, right? Point is, is the intention behind that, the right decision making, the, the balance in your life, the really focusing on that, like, Don't get yourself caught up in doing too much because we also need to have that stability to be able to do our light work. I hope that makes sense to you. So, wow, they were really intent on this part of the message. So 
And the reason for this, we're going to go into this, it might seem obvious, is, okay, they just said the collective's at a turning point. And they're showing we'll see this in the spring. I don't know what that means. Sometimes we don't even actually see it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but it feels like we're going to. Collective is at a turning point in the times to come, in the new year to come, 2024. Okay, we're not going to talk about 2024 yet, but we're getting a little bit of a visual. We're actually setting the stage for that. Oh, they just said setting the table. Okay, what energy are you planning on taking into the new year? This is the precursor to that, okay? This is the precursor. So I guess what you should, and we'll come go, we're going to come back to the collective here in a minute. What I would say to you is like, so what do I do with that, right, as an individual? Take a look at where maybe you've turned a blind eye to, we all kind of have this, right? Something we know we need to do, but we really don't want to, or it just is, feels hard. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a way of being. Um, maybe it's overcommitting. You know, name something, right? Might be something super tiny. It might be something huge we've been ignoring, but we know. We know deep inside ourselves the things that we need to work on, right? And the things that do hold us back in that sense, or that we've wanted to change and shift all along. Bring your angels and guides in, ask for your assistance and help, but take a look at what you can pick for December to continue to make your light strong, to bring those that light back into you. Now, this doesn't mean we don't share our light. Here's the thing. We recollect our light, our energy, energy, light, so that we can actually have a strong flame, not one that flickers and dies out and then somebody has to relight us, right? <laughs> Remember, we always have a pile of light, but needless to say, what is one thing you can do to seriously focus on in December that will help you? Okay, they just said be a stronger, be a stronger force of good in the world. And remember, this doesn't mean you have to go create some big nonprofit out there and, and have it up and running and generate. I'm not talking about that because what we do in our day to day is so critically important. What are the things we can change up? How do we bring our light back in? Where are we fracturing ourselves? Because the collective is very fractured right now. It's literally the visual they're showing me. It's like lightning bolts getting shot out from everyone. Okay, because remember, how do I want to say this? It's, well, it's about, I've said it, I've already said it. <laughs> they just keep pounding me. You're bringing, how can you bring that light back into you? Where are you leaking light? That is, where are you leaking energy? that doesn't need to be leaked, doesn't serve you, doesn't serve anybody else. It's just an old habit, old pattern. And again, this gets into kind of New Year's, right? The human thing to do New Year's resolutions. I'm not looking for you to do that, but really what in December can you do? They keep talking about the precursor to the new year because we're going to be the ones. We're going to be asked for more is what I keep getting. I just got that. We're going to be asked for more. I don't know what that looks like. We're going to be asked for more. Commitment, they just said. Commitment. Commitment. Now, that can look very different. We've all up-leveled this year. You know it in your own way. You may not think so. You may be going through really tough times. That's up-leveling too, though, right? You're getting, because what we do is we go through these stages of, like, struggle. The thing gets done or starts breaking down or starts shifting and changing. We make new choices. We up-level. And then we have all the cosmic energies coming in, right? Moon, solstice, which, of course, we're going to be coming into the winter solstice, which is massive. We'll talk about that in a minute. Massive setup. Oh, they just said setup. Okay, it's a massive setup for the new year. Oh, which is why they want us to. Oh, they just said be ready. Be ready. Now remember, this doesn't always immediately translate into material things that we see. Remember, it doesn't translate into the 3D necessarily right away. We may see this come later. But we feel it oftentimes as light workers. At, at going through the awakening journey, we feel energy. We're becoming more sensitive. So what we want to be doing is preparing ourselves for that and so kind of back and I, I feel like I'm kind of jumping all over the place but they keep giving me a lot of information pick the one thing that you really want to focus on that you can do I'll just say that will help you feel like you are um, reclaiming more of your light now a lot of you may feel like I'm where I need to be we always have more <laughs> is what I will say where can you uh, maybe shine things up right but we are here it is critical time, they just said. Critical time. Okay, hold on. I feel like I'm getting something really significant, but I don't know if they're ready to give it to me. Um, 
Okay. They're showing a vortex of darkness, which might seem obvious right now, right? What we're doing by holding, by not falling into the darkness, doesn't mean we don't have empathy, sympathy, etc. for the collective, for people who are going through massive struggles. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean we don't recognize and turn a blind eye and stick our heads in the sand. It means we have a different energy around all of it. It means we hold on to the light for others. We hold on to the light. So what they're showing right now is the vortex of dark. This swirl, it's big. And it's just sucking people in. Okay. We know how this works, right? If you're, I'm just going to use this as an example. If you're plugged into the news all the time, you're sucked into the dark. You can't not be, right? It's hard to look at it from an observer perspective, and it's hard to be in that energy, right? But anyway, point is, is so what they're showing is, this is really interesting. They're showing the dark vortex. And there are a lot of people going in. Remember, it's the fight. It's fight mentality. It's the fractured energy, the energy going out. It's not bringing it in to grow your light. It's giving that away, what you have, and then it depletes you. And then you're in the dark because that's what the dark wants. Okay, the dark, right? Remember, duality, it's, we're all part of one still. Keep that in mind. Anyway, what they're showing, this is a really interesting visual, is they keep showing flames, but light workers, they show light. Here's a vortex of dark. And you've got, we've got, you're trying, showing two visuals, one of which is, you know, kind of like if you were back in, we're just going to make this up, like in the medieval times or whatever, and they're pulling boulders and they have those harnesses or like they'd be like walking like this and they're pulling boulders. They're showing that. But we're doing this kind of, it's kind of like um, tug of war. It, that's what I'm getting a visual of, kind of like a tug of war. But war, it kind of makes a lot of sense, that metaphor, tug of war. Pulling, but we're holding fast, okay? We're not getting pulled in. We're holding, we've got a lasso, this is going to sound weird, but we got, they're showing a lasso. I never say that word right. Lasso? Around the vortex. It's tied to us. We're holding fast. And if it's just one of us, that's not easy. But it's collective light workers. We know we we know why we're here. It's innate. It's innate. This when we start to wake up, it becomes like we just know, right? You know how that works. We all kind of get there in our own time. We're standing there strong, but we're also facing it at the same time. Without fear and without a lot of I don't want to say a lot of struggle because it is this journey is a, a struggle, but it's full of beauty as well. But this is our time. It's what I keep getting. Now that doesn't mean our time is just in this month, but we are a precursor. I keep getting. So I think this, what I keep getting is it's never been so important for us to stand strong in our truth, be who we are, be able to draw boundaries in our 3D day-to-day. -day. You may think, oh, that's, you know, a lot of people would think that's just not important. You know, that's not, I know I need to spend time on whatever, all that. No, it's energy, okay? It's what we have in the collective. Because remember, we're coming back into the oneness of ourselves. First and foremost, to light our flame, or not to light our flame, our flame's always there, to allow our flame to roar like a fire, a roaring fire, right? So that we affect others and we share that light, right? And we vibrate at a higher frequency. And then, as we bring that in, that's the key to everyone else shifting. It's kind of like I've said before, the hundredth monkey idea. We have to, if we all go into the abyss, who's the light? Where's the light, right? Because we are the, we are the incarnate light, right? We are that in, incarnate light. We're here to save ourselves, all right? We are here to save ourselves. And we're doing it through this awakening journey across the world. And I know it doesn't look like it right now, but I think you understand this tug and pull. Old Earth, New Earth, we've got that bridge tighter and tighter and now we got the vortex of energy that is really calling us right it's calling all of us where are we going to go where are we going to go which way are we going to go so i think right now there is also this um just keep this in mind it's okay if you feel like you're being pulled in that's part of this journey to be able to know that that can happen all right um, 
but you're not going into the vortex, okay? You're, you're going to come back out. I think many of you have already experienced how to draw the line and understand your journey and know where you're at with things. But if you're new to this journey, it can be very hard because you're just coming out of the... Um, they just said the matrix, like coming out, like the pill thing. You just took the pill, so now all of a sudden you're kind of aware, but you're getting your footing. It's going to be very hard to draw those lines, particularly now in the times that we're in. So we're preparing for the new year. I know I'm repeating myself, but this is kind of how it works. Um, preparing for the new year. So this is, okay, so let's just see. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, okay, they just said the future is unpredictable, which I guess it always is, right? Oh, more so now than ever. Okay. There's a lot of shift and change coming in 2024, as we know. There's an election here in the United States. Not that we have to talk about that now. Um, but what I, and we've got something coming in spring. Again, around all of this swirl that we've got, the, this vortex. We're going to have a lot more Earth events go. I, I don't, like I said, I kind of don't, even talk about this anymore because it's just kind of common. We know the earth is going through a shift and change, but it feels like almost the earth is trying to wake people up through like trying to stop a lot of what's going on. Um, they just said mass hatred, it's trying to stop mass hatred, like to wake us up to something else, to some, some common humanity I just got. So we're going to, I don't know, it'll be really interesting to see what we've got going on here. Um, because, like I said, you know, she's shifting, Earth is shifting and changing herself as well. We're going through the same thing. We're just all going through the same thing, right? In our own individual way, in our collective way, in, in the way of Earth. Um, I feel very spinny and like I'm out of my body right now. Um, just sharing that with you because it's, a, it's interesting when these words come through and the vibration they bring in. Uh... Yep, standing in our truth. Don't let anyone sway you. And it's not about fighting that, right? It's, but it's about very much collecting yourself. Collecting yourself. They keep giving that visual of us holding the, you know, we're like, we're, we're, we're holding, we got a lasso around the vortex, pulling it, but not pulling it. We're just actually standing there with it so that everybody, okay, so it doesn't collapse in. Okay, so this is going to sound interesting. It looks like a black hole. We're standing over here on the edge. We're holding it so we don't collapse into a black hole. They just said of, of oblivion. Remember, these are all metaphors, but they're very much showing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in a very um, tenuous, deciding time. I don't know how long this is going to last in, in this kind of thing we're talking about, how that's actually going to show up in 3D. But um, we do have, oh, this is what I wanted to come back to, and then I'm going to wrap up. Ugh, I feel like they could just keep talking about this. They really want to make points. Um, we have the solstice coming up here the end of December on the 21st. I always want to say the 22nd. <laughs> anyway, the 21st. They just said the word power play. Okay. Okay lining up for the solstice. Okay, so you kind of want to think about that, like lining up for the solstice, recognizing it in some fashion. Again, you don't have to do something elaborate, but there is an energy shift that's coming. Um, it's also, they just said collapsing time. We're going to have more time lines. Oh, okay. They're, this is interesting. They're showing multiple timelines. We know there's lots of different timelines, but they said we're getting down to more narrow timeline. This ties to us. Remember how we talk about our soul flag fragments, our past lives, all this coming into the oneness of us? This is happening now, whether you know it or not. Many of you are very attuned to this, but in timeline, our own timelines are collapsing too. We're integrating because everything's basically happening now. And this whole other conversation about time that we've kind of touched on in the past. What they're talking about is we're coming to that. They just said the word zero point. Okay. Timelines, we're getting narrowing, Let fewer options, fewer options for timelines. Now, <laughs> don't ask me how that actually plays out. Like, oh, I see these three options of timelines. I'm going to 
this one looks great. I'm going to try that. That's not how this works. So it's happening energetically. It's It has to do with, with uh, zero point, as we've talked before. Sigma 8, you know, the zero point, it has to do with this. We're narrowing our focus, okay, as a collective. We're narrowing our focus. Which way do you want to go? We're narrowing our focus of timelines, okay? I feel like this has probably been confusing, <laughs> at least in what I remember as I've talked, but hopefully um, you can put these pieces together for your journey moving forward in December. Um, but we're going to want to know, they're showing like, really leaning into this end of the year and being prepared for the solstice because there's like the solstice comes and then there's launching off of the new year. Now you can say, well, time's not linear, blah, blah, blah. Time, we've created time. I mean, we've created a calendar that is very powerful. It's super powerful. So that's an energy. So the new year it feels very explosive. Very explosive is what I keep getting. I don't know what that means metaphorically. You know, they use tons of metaphors. But the solstice is setting us up for this. 2024 feels very, very active. And, you know, we were in the year of 20, you know, 2023 is the year of creative expansion. And if you recall, a year ago, it was probably September or October. I don't know if I said it on a video, but I sure said it myself. When they said to me, well, you know, 2023 is going to be the year of creative expansion. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And then, eh, hold on, hold on. Because before you can creatively expand, you have to break down, right? You have to break down what doesn't serve you. Uh, you have to shift and change, all that, right? So, oh my gosh, has 2023 been a year of massive change for people, whether it's in our bodies, whether it's in our awareness and our self-awareness, in our learning, in our decision-making as to what serves us, what doesn't. So many people have had massive shifts and changes. So what I would say to you is also reflect on what your year's been like. Go back to January of this past year. I know many people that I work with were like, they don't even going to recognize themselves. I mean, we've talked about this when they look at January and where they're at now and all the change they've been through. For the greater, right? It doesn't always feel like that. But we've all been through something. And so we're going to move further, more into activity and it feels like a lot of energy in 2024. This is already set up. I can just feel it. Okay, so get yourself, get yourself in a stable place. This is, the world needs us. The world needs every single individual one of us. Even if we're sitting in our homes like I do all day long, by myself, working pretty much, don't see a whole lot of people outside. Other than the people that I work with and being on social media, whatever, my neighborhood. But it matters when we're just sitting here doing our thing day to day. It matters what you do. All right. Because of your field, because of your light, it's super, super important. So keep doing your self-care. Keep, you know, listen to this video again to really understand what we're being asked of. Okay, because I feel like, you know, we're at a deciding point in that sense. That we are really here. There are so many of us now. So many have uh, awoken since 2020 even. That we are, we are here holding fast. And we are here. Our purpose is... Like the time has come. The time is coming. Oh, I just got chills. Anyway, so again, I didn't introduce myself. I will do that now. I'm Carolyn Zeiser. For those of you who have not seen any of my videos before, I thank you so much for joining me today. And for all of you who have always been here, thank you so much for supporting me across time. I, I just love hearing from you. And please do like, share, and subscribe. It helps me reach other people with these messages, as well as below in the description box, you're going to see a link that will take you to more free content through a video that I have on my website that helps you create flow in your body for health and wellness. But as I say, more importantly, you get a weekly email from me on Fridays of a supportive poetic message from the Light Keepers moving forward, because I also channel poetic messages, as most of you know, but if you're new, you wouldn't know that. So my poetic messages are from the Light Keepers who are a group of angelic beings are available on my Facebook page under Purple Rain Healing. But then you're going to also, if you sign up for the email, you'll sign up under, or excuse me, you'll you'll get a uh, email each Friday for the week forward with a beautiful supportive message. So that's what I use my email list for. Anyway, check out my services also on purplerainhealing.com where I offer services of one-on-one -on -one mentoring through this whole spiritual awakening journey. We travel your journey. We help you understand your soul's journey and how your current incarnation is connected to the bigger picture. And so you will understand your life 
so much more as we work together because we, we deal with past, present, future, the awakening journey, your life journey, the relationships you've had, the experiences you've had. We're going to tie a lot together for you and I'm going to really help you on your awakening journey moving forward. I also offer past life readings. Additionally, since we know, in fact, we're going through so much of that reintegration, that so much of that understanding of past lives. I offer those channeled messages in the distance energy healing and individual guidance sessions. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful start of your December moving forward, and I will see you in the next video.